Okay, welcome to part two in our tutorial on building the flag. Um, what we have so far is we have a base, we have a flagpole, and we have a plane that will serve as our flag here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, let's texture this, and you can use any image you want, okay? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my properties editor over on the right here. It looks like this. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find where it says uh, UV image editor. Okay. And I'm going to open up an image that I want to texture on here. But first of all, we need to go into edit mode. Okay. And over on the left, we need to unwrap this. Okay. And this is a pretty easy unwrap because it's just one face. So I'm going to click unwrap. And then I'm going to choose the first one on the list, Unwrap. Okay, And you'll see an orange box appear over here on the right. Now I can open an image onto that. So I'm going to choose Image, and then I'm going to choose Open Image. And um, I just happen to have a Texas flag. Any PNG or really any picture file, uh, GIFs don't work, but PNG or JPEGs do. I'm going to open the image. Um, I really don't care what kind of a picture you use. Now, we don't see it right now. Okay, but uh, that's because we're in solid mode. All right, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to choose textured mode. Okay, to see the image. Now you can see right now that uh, you know our great state of Texas is in some type of distress because the flag itself is not uh, in the direction it should be. So we're going to rotate it, and instead of using as I did in part one the rotator selector. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to use numbers this time. So we've got the, the green line is the Y axis and the red line is the X axis. So I want to rotate this okay, around the red axis. So I'm going to hit R to rotate and then I'm going to hit X. And in this case, I'm going to rotate it negative 90 degrees. And I'm going to hit enter. Okay. So I rotated the flag now and it is positioned the way it should be. Our next step is to subdivide this, okay? And over on the left, we have uh, an option, subdivide. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to subdivide, subdivide, subdivide a few times, okay? And, you know, I'm even going to go one more time. Now, I have 8,000 faces. No, 8,000, I'm sorry, 4,000 faces, okay? And, and that's a reasonable number. You don't want to go too high, but 4,000 should be fine, all right? And uh, I'm going to zoom in now. I'm going to hit A to deselect all. And I'm going to zoom in. Okay. And this is going to be, this is where it's going to be a little bit difficult because I did make so many faces. I'm going to hit, I'm going to select all the vertices along the left hand side. So I'm going to hit B for box select. And I'm going to try to draw a box. Hey, it looks like it's going to work. I'm going to draw a box around all the vertices on the left hand side of my flag. Okay? And we're going to make a vertex group out of this. So down at the bottom right hand corner where the UV uh, image editor is, I'm going to switch that back to my properties view. And I'm going to find the word properties. Okay? And in my class, a lot of times you have to kind of slide this right hand bar out a little bit. Um, so I'm going to take the object data here, which is our triangle. Okay? And we will see the term vertex group. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a vertex group. And I'm just going to call this, I'm going to change the name, and I'm just going to call it pin. Okay? Um, all right. So, uh, and then, you know, this is the important step here. We need to click assign. Don't forget to do that. So I'm going to click assign. Okay? Um, now, if you did miss the setup to get to this point, you know, show notes are there and you'll find part one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into object mode. And in order to play this animation to see whether or not our cloth simulation, well, we haven't made it a cloth yet, right? So uh, if I hit Alt-A right now, nothing happens. So over on the right, I'm going to choose our physics button, which is this little ball here. And I'm going to check cloth. Now under cloth, there are a couple things we're going to do. You've got presets. Okay, and the first preset there is silk, but you can choose cotton, denim, leather, rubber. And basically all these do is they just change the values under mass and structural and bending 
and spring and air, and you can play with all those and see what they do. But I need to select pinning, and I need to select that vertex group right there. All right, so the cloth knows where the pin is going to be and what it's going to pin to. And then under cloth collision down here, all right, uh, we don't want the we do want self collision. Okay, so in its most basic form, now if I hit Alt A, you'll see that it, because I'm rendering right now and I'm recording, it goes a little bit more slowly. But once it works its way through, it'll go um, a lot more quickly. And when we render it as an animation, it'll certainly look very nice. Um, the flag itself does fall down, and we do have now a cloth like object. Okay, so that concludes part two. Uh, in part three, what we're going to do is we're going to add a wind source. So part three will be a, uh, a shorter video, and uh, we'll just add a wind source because you can see right now that this flag has sort of come through, and it's also not colliding with um, our cylinder. Okay, so we'll set up a collision on the cylinder so the flag doesn't go through it, and we'll set up a wind source so that the flag blows back out again and it doesn't just fall and hang there. Okay, so we'll build on this in part three. Take a look in the show notes and you'll find a link.